so suddenly I got handed this set we e one and I don't even know is it set is it set set we e one or set we e one like we I uh, what what it's written on the back of it is it set we e one getting quite considerable so um yeah basically it's um it's a small a7s3 it's a cheaper a7s3 that's it so they kind of put a a7s3 inside a ZVE ten body. No, I mean A seven C. I I was thinking A seven C. I don't know why I said ZVE ten. It is like A seven C without wheel finder. So ZVE one is actually smaller and the smallest Sony mirrorless ever. Well, firstly, Sony um obviously they, they they call the they add a flip up screen on the ZVE RX zero become the RX zero Mark two and they put a hashtag vlog with Sony. They don't actually call this vlogging camera. They kind of imply it as a vlogging camera. But the first camera they called it a vlogging camera was the ZV-1. What have they done? They put a improved in, in internal, I mean built-in mic to a RX100 body become Z, ZV-1. <laughs> So they do it with this as well. It do have different settings. It got auto, you can set it to front, you can set it to back, or all directions. So the mic uh, set to the front, just like your video. We should go to somewhere noisier to test it. But I think last time, uh, when I test the set V1 and the set V E10, the built-in mic, it's kind of a little bit better than other usual built-in mic. But for now, it seems like the auto-directivity sounds like sometimes it can't decide which way it should point to. That's quite... That's quite magnificent. Yeah, it's like a whale tail. Looking from here. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? And is it a butterfly? <laughs> it's Superman. Car train? No. So this is a body that's uh, smaller than A7 Mark C, <laughs> A7 Mark C, A7 C. Now on top, yes, you got that um, special built-in mic. You still got a horseshoe that you can use flashes if you want, or put your mic on that. Now this, which is really convenient to switch from steel to video to S and Q. On of which next to a shutter button really useful and then there's a there's a zoom switch here which can control some preset lenses from Sony power zoom or it can control the clear image zoom basically it clock in for you as a zoom but it don't lose any pixel resolution. It uses one of those Z battery, not the really weak battery from years ago from Sony. At the side you got the mic jack and the USB-C. You can power this camera by USB-C as well. SD card, just one SD card on this side quite interestingly. Got headphone jack as well but uh, mini HDMI, well. Good news is this one too got uh, in-body steady shot. It's not, it's not image stabilization, it's not IS, it's steady shot. It's a Sony. So um, now I'm using active steady shot, which is it do clock in a bit. So it got that kind of uh, digital or is it, <laughs> should it call it? Usually you call it digital stabilization, which means it crop in to the image. I actually find it funny because everything is digital. Uh, anyway, it do crop in a bit, and I think it's uh, it's finally safe Sony from the really weak uh, physical steady shot. I mean, back then the, the physical censorship steady shot, uh, turn it on or off, it actually just not much different. So. Thankfully, they add in this kind of active and on this camera, I actually got a dynamic active steady shot as well. When you have the active steady shot, that digitally clock in finally comparable to um, 
some other brands. Censorship, uh, stabilization. Yeah, that's, that's, that's just a fact. The Panasonic S5 Bar 2. More people should know about this. This is fantastic. I know this is a Sony video, but I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not sponsored by either of them, but this is better. <laughs> At least on stabilization, that's no question. That's, that's the too long di didn't watch. Jump to the conclusion. <laughs> this is better. But that's one new feature that nobody else have. Well, in a way, newish. Actually, if you remember, uh, Sony got some kind of auto framing before for photos. When you take a photo, it crop into your face. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Yeah. It w wasn't that useful. I mean. Why, why would you want to do that? You can do it on your computer, you can do it on your phone. <laughs> but anyway, it got it for video now. Actually, basically, it's just like the um, new MacBook Pro with the, the webcam, they actually zoom in to you, to track you. Um, I don't know if there any other uh, uh, laptop got it, but I'm a Apple fanboy, I deal with it. I only know that the uh, MacBook Pro got it. Imagine I just buy myself, which usually I just buy myself anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's just like this. I can be just by myself and then the camera kind of like, um, I kind of, it looks like I got a cameraman uh, zooming out when I'm walking towards the camera. Just like that. I walk to here. Oh, hello. Oh, actually, there's something, somebody else. Something. But one thing is that it kind of like when I'm too far away from the camera, it's lost track and then zoom back out. Still alright. Still good. Yeah. Oh. Another thing I can think of that this could be useful is that, oh, for example, if you talk about uh, cooking, you make a cooking show on YouTube, then you can have two cameras, one camera showing the whole kitchen, and this camera zooming to you, do some uh, chopping, preparing, and then going to this, uh, do the cooking, whatever, and come back to here, uh, do some other ingredients, something like that. Another feature is this framing stabilizer. Kind of an odd name. This is for when you're holding the camera, but it will center on your face. I don't know why you can't do it yourself. Because before that, the auto framing is for you to put it down, set it on a tripod or whatever, so it crop into you. Kind of useful in some situation, but this one, I'm not sure in what situation that it would be useful. For one, it crop in so much. Now I have to tap what I'm going to track. So now it track me. If my head move around, now my hand is not moving, the camera is not moving. It's just the framing move. But I don't know why I can't do it myself. Which, what situation this would be useful? If you know, leave a comment down below. I, I, I don't know. I mean, they, they, they clearly got an idea what, how it would be useful. I just don't get it. So now I turn off the framing stabilizer. Oh no, without the framing stabilizer, how I'm going to film myself? Oh, actually, it's working really well. I got a screen. I can see, see myself in the screen. And this is a Concorde. Look at that. Magnificent. Only supersonic air liner. So it works perfectly. It's not crop in as well. Other than that, they have this new shortcut thing that goes straight into the focus control. Introduced from set V1. That's basically aperture control for people who don't bother learning that. Also a simple slider for darker or brighter image and a Lighter for cooler or warmer color temperature. And this is Sydney Vlog to bring out your filmmaker inside each vloggers. Which are some color profile including forest and ocean that sounds like air freshener. 
See, I didn't make this up. Now looking at other Set V cameras, I was pretty excited when Sony released the Set V1 almost 3 years ago because it was the first compact camera that's designed for video. Then came Set V E10, well it wasn't too different than say a A6600. Now this Set V E1, I can't help but feel funny to call it a vlogging camera just because it has some easy to understand shortcuts, Sydney vlog, hey it has the word vlog in it. And the built-in mic, I mean, the improved built-in mic was great on Set V1, but on a larger camera, most may probably just add an external mic anyway because it's larger anyway. Also since the release of Rode Wireless Go, they become so popular with beginners these days because they are so easy to use, just clip it on your body. How many people actually would use the Set V E1 built-in mic? Some may think full frame is not needed for vlogging, but I've been vlogging with full frame cameras for decades from 5D Mark II to A7S II to S5. But lastly, the price isn't bad compared to competitor, depends on what you're looking for. But if you are looking for Sony, this baby A7S III is around the similar price to A7 Mark IV at launch. And it is such a small full frame Sony video shooter.